Our first story has serious global implications, the very survival of the human species. But it's about something that really couldn't get more personal, fertility. Researchers have recently found staggering drops in male sperm count in Western countries. The big question is why? Correspondent Tim Samuels agreed to put himself on the front lines in New York to figure out what's up down there. I'm Tim Samuels in New York, investigating a crisis close to home, a global spermageddon. An alarming new study has found that between 1973 and 2011, sperm counts in Western males, men in North America, Europe, Australia and New Zealand, dropped from an average of 99 million sperm per cubic centimetre to just 47 million. Theoretically, if the trend persists, by 2050, our sperm may disappear entirely. I'm here to add my sample to the scientific pool, and I'm deeply hopeful that mine are still swimming. Hi, I'm Tim. Hi, Tim. I'm Hi. Miriam. Hi, Miriam. Um, this is about to get awkward. OK, here's your specimen jar. You can come right on in here. You are provided with the materials that you need. But then once you're finished, you give me a call at this number. Is there a special okay? word? Thunderbirds, I'll go. Uh, you're done. OK. <laughs> OK? Good? Yeah. I'll see, see you, you on then. The other side. Bye bye. Cheers. With Miriam analyzing my sample upstairs, I'm turned loose on the streets to fret over my count. And the modern day phenomena like stress and obesity believed to lower it. Don't get me wrong, I take my fertility very seriously. To prep for this count, I've been eating right, exercising, managing stress. Recently, I even started laying off the booze. But troubling research suggests little of this may matter. Of the many factors contributing to sperm count decline, there's one that's especially hard to avoid. Plastics. More specifically, a group of chemicals found in many plastic products called phthalates. Phthalates are added to plastic during manufacture to make it soft and flexible. They're just wonderfully versatile, amazing products. It's just that they also have the effect of altering our body's hormones. Epidemiologist Shauna Swan, who co-authored the Breakthrough Fertility Study, also researches phthalate's effect on the hormone testosterone. Shauna's met me at this 99 cent store to show me how ubiquitous these chemicals are. From me handling, you know, a plastic bottle, how does it get from there to my testes? The chemicals that we are concerned about are not chemically bound to the plastic. They're in the composition, but they come out. Microwaving leftovers in a plastic container is a prime example. When heated, the phthalates leach out of the plastic into the food. We're ingesting them, we're absorbing them, and we're breathing them. For reasons not entirely known, once inside the body, phthalates seem to inhibit testosterone production. That's scary enough when you're a grown man, but Shauna's research suggests worse damage could be done before we're even born. Your mother, when she was pregnant with you, what she drank, what she ate, what she was exposed to was actively affecting your body within her body. For his sex organs to develop, the male fetus needs testosterone in utero. When it's not there at the right time, in the right amount, then he can be what we call incompletely masculinized. Translation, his testicles may not develop and his penis may be smaller. And he will have a low sperm count. That's extraordinary. It is extraordinary. 